Yo, what's up, everybody? Uh, let me know in the chat if you can hear me. Um, it's been a while since I streamed, so I'm still sorting out all the technicals. Um, yeah, today I'm just going to take a look at the Shades sample pack that we released and uh, check it out, listen to some of the sounds, and put together a couple beats or songs or whatever. Um, so yeah, let's do it. Uh, what did I do? I loaded up uh, one of these virus hats and uh, put a reverb on, on the scent just to see what it sounded like. And then I'm actually like playing it. There's the regular hat. Three octaves down. I want to kind of experiment with uh, using these samples in a way that uh, most people would normally use them. So I'm going to use the hat as something else, like a little effect thing. Uh, what tempo is that? Let's see. In my head, I'm doing like a 110, so let's try 110. Uh, this piano roll, C0. I'm going to play this and just see how it sounds. It's going through uh, Valhalla, um, but yeah, let's see. So I want that to be half that time. Well, this is sort of this rhythmic element that I wanted to do. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a little laggy because my internet is pretty much trash, but hopefully uh, it seems like they prioritize the audio on the stream, so hopefully you guys will be able to hear the audio without inter interruptions, despite the fact that my camera is going to be lagging. Um, yeah, so sorry about that. It's not really much I can do about it, except pay a hundred bucks more a month for faster internet. Um, so yeah, let me see. Uh, where we go? User library. I'm gonna grab like one of these leads, I think. Let's check out the leads. <laughs> So I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna pull that out, and then find a granulator, and uh, mess around with like reprocessing that lead, just to make some sort of secondary, secondary uh, sound out of that sound that you know, so I don't have to just drop it straight in. So turn on the MIDI and. Uh, I'm gonna turn up the spread on here. Turn up the spray, turn up the scan so it's moving through the sample. Um, increase the attack because I want this to be sort of a, a pad sound. And then I'm going to turn the filter all the way down and just slowly bring it up and just see how that sounds. Yeah, I'm liking that. So I'm going to record that to a new channel. Uh, I'll just change the audio in to resampling and hit record on both of these. Let's try that again without the, uh, without the rhythm that I made. So that's sort of like a cool bass, bass tone. Um, I call this like spooky bass. Uh, I'm gonna do another one um, and just grab another. Um, let's see. Um, 
So let's go back to the user library, grab another. Maybe I'll grab one of these Saturn things. Um, and just drop it into Granulator, and I'll just mess around with it. Turn up the frequency here. Cool, I'm just going to play around with that for a little bit and maybe leave the leave the filter open. A nice little sound. Um, I'll do a couple more of these with uh, some like non. It's basically turning non pads into pads. So maybe I'll grab one of these vocal things and see how those sound. That's cool. I'm playing a chord. I'm playing like a a minor kind of chord on here um, and uh, yeah let's let's just record that So it's just taking that very simple sample and turning it into something a lot more complex. Cool. So that's like a, a Vox granular, and this one is sort of a, what does it sound like again? I can't remember. I'll call that like a, oops, rename. Mid-range granular. So, I think what I would do is maybe um, start. I'll just I'll just copy this like hi hat virus thing over, and just loop it and just listen to how it sounds. I feel like there wants to be like a snareish kind of sound there, so I'm gonna grab like one of these sort of low key ones. Let me. Let's see. I like this one, but I want it to be sort of the same pitch as... Um, there's a very subtle sort of pitch to that, uh, that hi-hat sound. Um, so I'm just going to see if I can match it. Um, might be a little tricky, but... Yeah, I feel like it's, you know, hitting this at like a D. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't have perfect pitch if that's like a real D, but it's uh, a D in the context of the snare anyway. So good enough. Um, I'm gonna add some some reverb to that. Maybe I'll just use the channel that's already here. Cool. I'm just going to add a little more tension with a sort of offbeat, uh, uh, like minor second, or not minor second, but I guess it is a minor second. It's like a, that kind of thing. And then what I would do is like put all these, I'm going to put all these in a group and uh, put a, a reverb on it and then just sort of uh, modulate the, the dry wet. So let's see, 
Um, so it goes from totally wet and then sort of comes into focus over time. Okay, so what I want to do here is do an auto filter and open it up, sort of like opening up with as the reverb's getting drier. Or at this point, I'm going to grab this like spooky bass and have it come in under that. So let me see. I'm going to unwarp it and just drop it in like right here and just, just fade the edge a little bit. pitch right sounds like uh, plus eight or minus four works let me see if minus four is better might actually put it right at the beginning okay so I prefer the plus plus eight to the minus four so I'm gonna do that like this, and then I'm going to grab the mid-range and put it in a new channel and have that come in on top of it. Let's see. channel and I'm going to drop in the vocal thing and I'll have that sort of lead into a kind of a drop I think so that works I'm going to do like a splash or like a ride go over a ride somewhere this and I'm gonna put it on texture mode and stretch it way out as much as possible um, so that you get a little bit of sort of granular sound to that ride um, and then I'm gonna pan this all the way left duplicate it pan it all the way right duplicate it again pan it center uh, and they'll all sound slightly different because of the, the way the texture algorithm works. Uh, the flux will sort of like change the grain uh, playback position uh, sort of randomly, uh, depending on like how much flux you add. So since they all have a little bit of flux, they will occupy slightly different, uh, or, or they'll, they'll create slightly different sounds and, and create a wider stereo image. I'm going to group these together and just call it like a riser. Um, and then I will, uh, maybe I'll put like a little bit of granular, or not granular, was it grain delay on that? Grain delay, there we go. Um, and I'm gonna turn up the spray, a little bit of random pitch, and then I'm just gonna go show automation on the dry wet and go from like 100 to zero. So it starts out super grainy and gets slightly less so. And then I'll just solo this so you guys can hear like what I'm doing with this riser sound. Um, so it's this sort of really tense, um, high high end sound. I'm gonna like put, just put an OTT on this just to bring out a little bit more of the body of the sound. So there's not, it's not as dynamic. Um, I just want to squash it a little bit. And 
yeah, let's see how that sounds, so. Cool. It's a nice little intro. Um, so let me just clean up a little bit here. I actually don't want to do that. We're, oh yeah, we're good. Delete that. Um, I'm going to do a couple more granulator things. Um, let's see, let me grab... Um, let me grab one of these loops. I'll grab this loop and just mess with it with granulator. Let's see what's going on here. around with this for a little bit until I find something I like. some more effects on this and see if I can get something interesting. It's like close but not quite there yet. Starting to get some interesting sounds. Uh, I'm gonna like OTT it a little bit before the limiter. Turn off the bass on the OTT, back it off a little. Okay, that's cool. Uh, I'm gonna start resampling this. Just move around the sample. Try some not spread versions.
Okay, yeah, there's some stuff. All right, so then what I would do is basically like, um, maybe I'll like lay down a super simple kind of 110 beat and then like chop this up and try to make a baseline out of it. Um, but yeah, there's some interesting shit in there, I think. So let me, uh, let me jump back into here and uh, we'll just make a quick beat. Um, uh, close all these and uh, let me grab a grab a couple of like let me do this in MIDI. Let me go back to shades. Grab a quick kick here. A, a more subtle kick, so I'm just going to kind of like um, modulate or like edit one of these kicks to be a little bit more chill. Um, but basically, let's see. I'll try and just start with this one and just see where we get with it. Um, yeah. Okay, what's the steam? Okay, so there's like a lot of tonal information in this kick, which is fine. But I want it to be a little bit more boomy. And then a little bit less release. Cool, that's good. So just like a low frequency kind of kick. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to do a very simple pattern, just a boom sort of offbeat kind of thing. And then um, you grab one of these, let me grab a couple hats and just see if like layering these hats on kind of adds to the transient sound of the kick. Let's see. That one's kind of good, let's see. Um, still got that filter on, turn that off. And I'm gonna try just transposing this like down a bunch and uh, See where that gets us. Cool. I like that. Um, and then let's do a snare. So let me grab. I like that one a lot. It's kind of a shakery thing. Um, Yeah, moving the start point makes it more into a snare, or like a like a clap thing. I'm playing it. Uh, that's C3, so I'm playing it down like I don't know, eight eight steps, eight semitones. Um, okay. Let's loop that up and see how it sounds. This is a pretty basic beat, we'll see. I'm going to add a little bit of like erosion on the kick just to bring a little bit more of the high end back. Then I'm going to group all these and run them through saturator and just crank it up a bunch and then turn it down a little bit. that um let's do a hat um i'm gonna grab something that's not a hat and turn it into a hat let's see uh shades um effects maybe yeah one of these foley joints should be kind of cool let's see um let me just 
just uh, roll out a super quick hat pattern here. Just the 16th notes, I think. Cool, I'm gonna high pass it. Dig it. Cool, I'm gonna duplicate a couple of these snares. Like, uh, let me do, uh, I'm gonna do like a little triplet roll. Um, yeah, right here. Um, and then I'm gonna join these and just like pitch them up one semitone. That's cool. This is, uh, the tail's getting on top of itself. I've got to turn it down to one voice. Um. Cool. Just a really basic little snare fill. Um, I'm going to do a couple of like super fast rolls here. Do another hat on top of this. Um, let's find a. Yeah, that one's cool. Um, let's do the, like the tiniest little piece of this thing. sort of a offbeat on that. Let's see. Yeah, like uh what is that the last So that is the drums, uh, like a, for like a main drum drop, kind of like that. So let me just listen to the build up into it. Let me do go a little back and further. This stuff is all a little bit loud compared to the drop. I'd probably take this down minus six. And then just, uh, let me just take all of these. Oh, no, you can't do that. Um, riser's a bit loud. I'll do like minus eight on that. This thing's way loud. I'll do minus nine on that. This thing's fine. This thing's fine. Maybe minus six. Um, Um, yeah, so I'm going to start working with a baseline, I think. I'm going to grab that stuff that uh, we did before and sort of massage it into a baseline. This is like the granular base, um, the choppy one. And uh, I'm just going to play around with like looping 
different elements of it until I find something that I dig. Um, and I'll just, I know that I'm going to want a side chain to the kick, so I'm just going to throw it on there right now. Um, so where are we? We're doing drums, kick. Um, yep, that's cool. And then, you know what? I'm actually going to side chain to the hat here. Yeah, because that's a shorter sound. And that way I'll just have a little bit more control. Um, so um, I can I can like immediately uh, I'll sidechain to the side chain to the hat, and then if you go to this little thing, you can watch like what it's doing. Um, so here, where are we? Um, Cool. Um, actually, kind of sounds like a bass line already. Gonna drag the start point and just jump around to parts and just see if anything jumps out at me. Okay, I kind of like that. Um, I'm gonna uh, make a new channel and just uh, drag the parts that I like into the new channel uh, and just turn it off for now. Um, I like how that granular thing like coincides with the snare, or it like happens a little bit before the snare. Um, so I'm just gonna like grab that and pull it out. Cool. Um, that's all good. Let's see. Ooh, that's sick. Yeah, that's all pretty cool. Um, let's see. Mute this around the, the kick. line that up a little bit more like and just open this up so it's like a little more kick I like this too let me uh, I'm just gonna pull it out and put it here so I know I want to go on a snare um, Let's keep listening. So this part is good though. Um, I like this a lot. And I'm just gonna like, uh, okay. I just wanna maintain my place and like like how I liked how that lined up. So I'm just gonna put a like a dummy region right here and just turn it off, right? So when I copy and paste it later, it'll be like lined up on the bar. Um, let's keep listening. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, so this stuff is all good. I meant to drag that over. Um, I'll leave the, the dummy regions there too, and then I will move this back. A lot. Oops. Just want to cut it, put it here. There we go. Um, I also like this. Like, uh, I think I switched to the rock preset on the amp for a sec. It sounds cool. 
Um, I'll put it here and then like just roll this out and just kind of listen to it. Um, I think right here it stops being cool. So I'll just pull this down here. I like that a lot. Um, and I kind of like how it stops or starts on the like on the offbeat there. Okay, let's keep going. It's a cool snarly bass sound. Maybe with a little bit of a attack on it would be good. Um, cool. So I pulled out a few sounds that I like from that. Um, so now we just basically need to arrange them into some thing that like makes sense musically. Um, so this is like. Uh, let me just turn this off and we can um, mess around with this granular base. So, this is my channel. Uh, yeah. Cool. It already sort of sounds like a like a phrase or like some kind of uh, musical idea. Uh, doesn't really have a lot of like um, like groove to it yet, though. So I want to like mess around with like just find some parts that I really like and um, let's see let's see what's going on. How about... Okay, so let me just move this stuff all back and bring things in one by one and see if we can find like a nice musical phrase that we like. Um, I like that. Um, I'm gonna repeat it and then like change the first the first note. So it goes. pitch the kick up to match it like Also, another thing you can do is like um, um, 
i'm going to turn this region off and then like just drag the start point around and find other interesting areas like say i have this loop going and i kind of like it and i want to add some more variation i'll just like um just straight move the start point around in a big sample so like uh, let's see Attack is good. Um, okay, so this loop, I like this second, the sort of B section here. I'm going to change it up a little bit. So let me loop the whole thing and figure out where it needs to change. So uh, let's let's try this one. I'm gonna do a sort of micro loop, and we'll see if that gets us anywhere. Too much kick. I want it. I want it to sound like that, but not so bumpy. More consistent tone. So let me see. Yeah, like that. And then I'm gonna duck it out when the snare happens. So it just sounds like the snare is just cutting through. And then I might add a pitch drop on that. Um, and then uh, let's see, pitch drop a little longer. Show the automation and put it in like right here. Let's see how that sounds. Put on soft. Um, that's cool. A little longer. This part wants to be something else, I think. So let me just uh, drag around the sample start point and see if I can find something cool. I like that. There's a little like subtle, subtle like crunchy sound at the end of it that like slingshots you into the snare nicely. So the second one, I think taking out the kick is like cutting the energy out a little bit too much. So let me just bring it back in. And then I think what I'll do is like move this just a little bit after the kick. You can get a lot more energy out of stuff by like um, having a kick and then like just silence and then the bass comes in, you know? So you're not trying to layer the kick and the bass. You're just like one thing's happening, the other thing's happening. That's like a big you know, trick that I use all the time just to just to create some space. Um, so let's let's see. Let me um, listen to just this little bar right here, and just drag the start point around here. Sick. A little like machine gunny sound. I want like a more more percussive attack on this, so I'm just literally gonna turn it up and let's see. So I'm just gonna crank this up until it's like almost touching the top. Yeah. And then I will fade this so 
you've got this more like percussive thing going on. It's too much. I don't like uh, five. It's perfect. And I'm going to copy that to the other places where I'm using it. There's another one here. Uh, is this it? That's no, different. Cool. Um, I'm gonna keep rolling with this groove for like another another few bars here. So let me just I'm just gonna grab these and do a duplicate. And uh, I'm gonna put like an open hat on this too. Um, so let me just grab uh, maybe not an open hat, but like like a rad. Do a rad. I like this rad. Uh, that's not shades, but I guess that's that's allowed to use other samples. Yeah, offbeat rad pattern here should be cool. Um, let me just duplicate this out and. Triplet. Um. Cool. I'm digging that. Uh, I want to put like a, a synth under there too. So I think I'm going to grab like um, one of the leads and uh, drop that in there. Let me see. Coming up on an hour working on this tune right now. Um, yeah. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. User library. Where am I at? Grab a grab a lead. Lots of bass sounds, kicks. Here we go. Leads. <laughs> the squirmy, squirmy lead here. Okay, I'm going to turn the loop on and what else? Turn the fade up a little bit. The loop mode, I want to go the other way, so let me, let me just jump into Sampler. I'm just a little bit more comfortable in Sampler here. Um, so yeah, this loop, I want to loop back here, go back and forth. And I want a little bit of crossfade, there we go. And then for the pitch, I want this to be on glide. it with the, the low. There's already like a positive direction pitch envelope on there. Very subtle one. Just give it some attack, but I kind of like it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put this through some reverb. My go-to is Valhalla Vantage Verb. I love this thing. Leave it big. Pull out some of this bass malt. And then I'm going to smash it through amp. Something like that. 
Uh, maybe a bit more gain, more speed. Actually works as a bass sound pretty well. Something like that. The scale I'm playing is a, a C, C sharp, E, F, G, G sharp. A sharp, so it's like a gypsy kind of scale or a Spanish kind of scale. Which is like, I love, I love that scale. I use it on like pretty much every song. Um, so yeah, let's see if we can like make something like that work with this tune that we're going that we're that we're working on here, so I'm not going to write MIDI, I'll just, uh, here, let me, I want this to have more, more verb, more amp, maybe, maybe a different preset on this. Yeah, that's better. Um, maybe a little OTT. Not necessary. I do want to pull out some of the lows though. Let's see. So what if I I'm gonna try and like smash the, the lows way up before this amp and then pull the lows out, which can get some interesting timbres. Let's see. I'm digging that. Uh, maybe a little too much reverb. This is kind of how I dial in a lead sound. It's like reverb, distortion, that kind of stuff. So let's see. Um. I have no idea what pitch that is, so I'm gonna have to um, make a new channel and I'm just gonna copy it in here and just duplicate it a couple times and duplicate that again. I'm gonna join it up. This is all just a trick to like figure out what pitch this is, but basically, uh, okay, that's good. So, uh, and then I'll just play the uh, lead on top of it until I find the right key, right? Uh, okay, so that's uh, an F for the lead. And then I'm gonna, um, so I can just comfortably play in my scale. I'm just gonna, because uh, I'm not very good like um, keys player, so I'm just gonna play my scale like in C the way I know how to, and uh, just transpose it using the Ableton pitch. Um, so here we go, uh, pitch. Um, one, two, three, four, five. So that'll be I'll be playing in C, and it'll be coming out in F. Uh, so that works, right? So, let's see. Okay. Um, cool. I'm just going to mess around and just vamp on this, like, scale um, and see if I find any interesting kind of melody to go with this. Press it against the kick so it doesn't quite pop through so much. Um, what was that doing? I was actually compressing it on the hat, which is this. And let's check that out, make sure it's good. Yeah, we're good, so. So 
sometimes the lead line can be two notes and still sound great, you know? Um, that um. I'm gonna lay that down real quick and I might mess with it later um, but yeah start recording here Last note is not right. Let me uh, just mess with it. Let it look, uh, uh, something like that. Didn't really hit the right note. What's going on here? Uh, here we go. I don't actually want this pitch slide thing at the beginning. It's too much. I'm just going to zero it out. Cool. Um, I like the pattern. I think like what I would do is uh, maybe not have it going the whole time. So let me let me try some try just basic auto filter trick and just see if this sounds cool. So let's open it up. Maybe here. little call and response with the uh, the main baseline something like that um. I like it to be like a little bit off the grid um, everything's a little off the grid um, but I want this to be extra wonky let's see Maybe we can have it change pattern. We'll, we'll, I'll just roll it out doing this A, B thing for now. Uh, and then we've already done this little like drop thing, so I'm just not going to do it this time. And then I'm going to go keep this over the one. And then on the and, it'll be... Uh, the base, so let's see, and cut the uh, cut the kick out. Yeah, I like that, but I want this to hit more like a kick. So I'm gonna put the kick back in right there. Uh, cool. So let's say.
Um, okay, so what if this does something a little different? Let's say here. Nice, cool. So that sort of like uh, helps complete the scale a little bit so you know like where the scale is. Um, there's like that little EF in there. Or, um, I love this scale because it has so many uh, semitone intervals. This has got the C, C sharp, and then the EF, and then the uh, G, G sharp. Yeah, sorry about the lag. I can't really do too much about it, but um, hopefully you guys can still hear the music. Um, and this is recording too, so I'll upload it to YouTube later. Uh, cool. Um, let's see. It's 5.08. I'm going to uh, make a quick uh, breakdown for, for this and then um, wrap it up. I'm going to duplicate this lead and uh, take the auto filter off and get rid of all this stuff. And delete this, delete all the hats here. Maybe I'll actually make a duplicate of this hat and make like a breakdown-y kind of hat. So. Kind of spacious, so I will put. I was going to do uh, Valhalla Vintage Forever, and I, I misclicked, so I'm going to just stay with this little accident and do Uber Mod and see how it sounds. I like that. Still want some reverb on it too, so I'll do a little bit of this. So there's like an alternate uh, snare for the breakdown, maybe a little bit more low pass. Okay, so what I want to happen with this lead is so these need to go. It's a breakdown, don't need a kick. until I get it how I really want it. So I want it to be sort of ambient, but still aggressive. Cool, so I think moving that up and down a little bit is gonna give me the sound that I want. Um, I'll just kind of do it by eye for now and then tweak it later. So let's see. Uh, I'm gonna grab a big bass dive sound. Um, just put it here, and just uh, like low pass it like this.
grab some like tense element from this thing and throw it in there too. So. I'll use a different part of this thing this time. So let me unwarp it. Uh, maybe try. I'm just going to reverse it and uh, use the back end of it as a build up. Turn up a little bit. See how that sounds. sub kick to last longer. I'm going to warp it, keep the timing, put on texture mode, so we'll just get sort of a shuddering kind of sub sound. Word up. Uh, yeah, that's like a quick, quick beat. I'm going to listen to the intro again, actually. Let's check it out. It's for fun. it for now. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Yeah, that's Decapitator doing the uh, doing the distortion on the master. Um, I probably wouldn't bounce a track like that, but it's it's nice to hear um, what it's going to sound like, you know, if you ask a mastering engineer to warm it up a little bit. Um, 
they will, and they'll use something better than a decapitator probably. Um, I love decapitator though, it's, it sounds great. Um, but sometimes I'll just bounce something like this, and if I have an idea that I kind of like but it's not quite working, I'll just bounce it out and uh, just like uh, use the bounce for something else, like resample myself. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anybody else have a uh, what's better? What's better than decapitator? It depends on what purposes. Uh, you know, like the. Uh, I think like a mastering engineer would use something like um, a thermionic culture, culture vulture. Uh, those are, that's like sort of a prohibitively expensive uh, piece of rack mount gear. And if you don't want to go that hard, uh, there's tons of like really good options for outboard uh, distortion. Um, the analog heat from uh, uh, Electron is really good. The Sherman filter bank is really good. I use that on a lot of stuff. Um, let me just, is my Sherman on? Yeah, let me just run everything through the Sherman real quick. and uh, let me just, You guys can hear how it sounds. You can get some interesting sounds doing that. And then you can like resample it too. So put a limiter after the Sherman. So is this going to work? Uh, it's not working because my second sound card isn't hooked up yet, right yet. But um yeah, uh, <laughs> what happens when you run the plasma drive through your granulator? Uh, it, the plasma drive is, is another like really cool gnarly outboard gear, um, outboard uh, distortion unit. Um, but it's not for every song, it's more like for like a specific sound. It sounds very like buzzy and raspy and electric. Um, but it's, it's definitely a cool sound design tool. Um, yeah, does anybody else have any questions? I'm just gonna like hang out and chat and answer a couple questions. Um, let me just scrub back and see uh, what, what y'all are talking about. I haven't really been paying too much attention to the chat, sorry. Uh, show me your donk. We got the donk, we got the donk on deck. Where's the donk? Um, we, should put, we should put one donk in this song. I can't really like uh, do this song without, without a donk. Who do I use for mastering? I use Bob Mack uh, at Subvert Central. He's amazing. He does a great job <coughs> and super fun, friendly, and easy to work with, uh, which is, you know, probably the most important thing when you're working with an engineer is, is that you can have open communication. And he's easy about, like, uh, doing changes uh, until you get it, like, you get as the product that you really want. Um, so let's listen, let's see where we could throw a donk in this, put a donk on it. This right here, donk goes here, donk goes there, unwarp, chop it, oops, chop it here. And then I'll just, there's an offbeat kick there. It's just going to be a donk instead. That's it. That's it. Donk is done. Might have to pitch it. We'll see. Uh, nah, it's perfect. One donk. Okay. Yeah, SC mastering. Yeah. Um, he's amazing. Uh, where do I harvest rave vocal samples from? Well, uh, if you go Google for like old rave tapes, uh, there's lots of like archives of people who have just digitized uh, tape packs from like old uh, drum and bass raves and stuff like that. Uh, you could grab a little vocal sample from there. But uh, if you're going to put the song out, you want to be careful about using that stuff because a lot of those MCs are still like active on the scene and, uh, you know, wouldn't be like super happy that you sample their voice. But a lot of them are also uh, super open to that. And, you know, uh, you know, you could just like hit them up and see if they'd be open to you sampling them. Um, but the sound of tapes from the 90s 
already has this sort of built-in distortion. Um, and so that sort of adds to that whole vibe. Um, yeah. Can we make a donk? We can make it we can make a donk. Um, I could show you like basically how I made that donk. Um, so let me make a new channel and do so it's an operator donk. I made that with operator. Uh, you've got um, there's your sub. Got your second channel, you put it at the same level as the first channel, and then you turn the sustain all the way down. Uh, that's more of a housey, organy kind of sound, and then it's getting donkey as you turn up the course, uh, the co <laughs> the course multiplier, right? So that's kind of a donk. That's more of a funky, like funk bass kind of sound. There you go. That's basically a donk. So let's open up the release time. Got to open up the release on this too. Amp. Valhalla Vintage Verb. Stereo. How much? How much Valhalla? We'll find out, but. your evil evil donk right there and then if you want it to be more of a, a wonk instead of a donk you just uh, change this envelope to be like uh, 150 milliseconds maybe there you go there's your wobble wobble donk thing Then you can, you know, compress that, uh, limit it, whatever, bounce it, and that's sort of how we made that donk. Um, there might be a little bit more going on there. There's a little pitch envelope, I think. So, um, yeah, so it gives it a little more kick. Um, turn the decay down. There you go. And you know, you can try other effects here, like uh, you, could, you could do like a, a little delay um, instead of a Instead of a reverb, and uh, let's see, like a, I'm gonna do like a sort of a millisecond pitched delay thing, um, and just turn it up, turn up the feedback. Starting to get some like phasing artifacts because of the uh, the, the really short uh, decay time or delay time. And you can get a nice stereo image by slightly varying the the delay times. Yeah, there's a bunch of different, you know, creative ways you can change like a, a cool wonk or a donk sound by just like adding different effects in the middle there. Let me try this with the wonk. Yeah. Ooh, that's nice. sounded good like a nice growl um, yeah that's like your basic Haas effect two point let's try two slightly different ones there's your 
use your rhythm bass. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Whittler says no Haas. I mean, phase issues in mono, yeah, that's true. Let's try this. Let's try this as an experiment. Just put a mono after that and just see if it still sounds cool or not. It still sounds alright. Um, it depends on like how much phasing you have. Um, but uh, yeah, so if I did like two here and three here, it might be. Yeah, it sounds alright either way. It it depends on like what you're adding the host to. Um, but uh, you can try like uh, keeping your sub in mono and then adding the Haas to a uh, sort of mid-range and high um, just by uh, splitting out the frequencies with um, like a low pass and a high pass and just hosting the highs. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, does anybody else have any other questions? Do, we use, do I use OTT? Yeah, I use OTT on a lot of stuff. Um, Sometimes what I like to do is like throw OTT on the master, um, not for export, but just to identify like what would benefit from a little bit of OTT. And it'll immediately bring out all the reverb tails and noise floors that are like inherent in, you know, analog synths and distortion plugins and, and distortion external units. Um, so if I throw an OTT on the master and just listen to it, we can sort of identify like what would maybe benefit from some OTT in the mix. So I think for me, the main thing that would benefit from it is the baseline itself. Um, and what I would do is like put it on there. Uh, I don't want it to interfere with the lows, so I just turn that off and then move this up to like 120 just so I know it's not messing with the lows. Turn it all the way off and then just like listen to this and solo it and turn this up slowly. Cool. So the effect I want to have is to amplify the little moments like this where you've got some like crunchy noise stuff happening in the background. Um, and so let's just like A, B that. So this is, this is subtle stuff, I think, but it, it can add a lot if you go in and pay attention. And like, this is sort of how I would use OTT more like surgically rather than like throwing it on uh, you know, at full blast and like duplicating it three times. <laughs> cool. So yeah, it just, it, it pulls out a little bit of the like fuzz in the top end of that synth, um, which I like. Um, so I'll just keep that on there at 33 and uh, let's listen to it in the mix. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking how that works. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the donk tactic. Donk tactic. Yeah, pitch. There's a pitch drop in there. Um, the pitch drop is. Uh, let me just show you the automation. It's just turning on right here so that this uh, baseline goes. Um, just sort of like dives down at the end of that bar right there. Uh, what headphones am I using? I'm using um, the Mastrop um, Hi-Fi Man HE4XX, um, which is sort of like my streaming cans because they're like the most comfortable. Um, and they sound really good too. They're like uh, one of the cheapest like planar magnetic uh, cans you can get. Um, I... Um, yeah, I, I rotate between a few different ones, um, but these are like my streaming ones, basically. <coughs> am I going to delete the project file? 
probably not. Um, I actually like it. Oh, I haven't even saved it. Yeah, I can see why you're asking. Um, yeah, I'll save it. Um, I dig it. I might send it to Alex and see if he wants to mess around with it. <coughs> um, what are some artists I'm listening to right now? Um, let's see. I, uh, um, I'm trying to think. I've been listening to like a lot of like non-electronic music. Um, I, uh, let's see. I've been listening to, uh, I made this like playlist of like, uh, black artists that really influenced me. Um, and I've just kind of been looping that and listening to a lot of like funk and soul and, uh, disco and, um, you know, just like random stuff. Uh, just because like when I'm in the studio, I'm like making gnarly electronic music. So I can't like listen to it all the time. Um, yeah, E40. <laughs> yeah, shout out Sonus. You know about the E40. Um, must listen to 90s rave artists. Um, yeah, so uh, Danny Breaks, uh, who also went by Sons of a Loop de Loop era, uh, is like one of my OG favorites. Uh, Prodigy is obviously one of the best um that's sort of like they're that's pretty obvious but like their catalog is just so consistent and like killer uh, 90s rave artists um i really like the early ltj bookham stuff a lot um and uh yeah um what parameters do I control most on the granulator? Uh, so let me just jump into the granulator and we'll take a look. My sort of like go-to granulator methodology is like turn on the MIDI control. So I'm playing. Oops, I still got my dunk going there. Um, playing the. Uh, So I'll start out like um, playing it at its native pitch at C3 and just mess around with, um, if you turn up the spread, you can get some really gnarly sounds. Uh, turn on the spray if you want things to be less tonal and more textural. Um, spray is basically modulating the playback start position so as I turn this up you can watch how it jumps around it starts jumping all over the place um, and then scan is gonna like make it so if I turn scan off it'll just stay in the same position the whole time so you just get like a, a single timbre and if I turn scan on it'll start sliding slowly through the through the sample, uh, and this time is like a factor of the native speed of the sample. So if I put it on 100, it'll go through the sample at its like normal speed. Um, so I'll just put it on 100 and you'll just hear how this is a drum loop, right? If I slow it down, so let's say I wanted to slow down the snare and like make the snare stretch out into infinity, I just go. So you get the idea. So if you're if you're working with like a rhythmic sample, that can be that can be you know fun, and then you can like resample that and like layer it in over the original snare, so you have the stretched version on top of the on top of the good one, or the or not the good one, but like the the uh, normal one. Uh, so and then maybe like mix that in quieter and like layer it in under the the regular snare. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's sort of my methodology for granulator, but it's it's a really deep. Uh, it's pretty simple on the surface, but like there's some surprisingly like deep things you can do with it and you can easily go from like a rhythmic thing to like a, a, like a, like a, I could turn this into a pad in about like five seconds by like turning off the scan, adding some spray, turning the grain down, play it up an octave, play it up two octaves, turn up the spray, 
and uh, filter it, right? So um, and add some attack, right? So this is now going to be a pad. Spread. Got to have spread for the pad. Hang on. Bear with me. I'm going to turn this into a pad. So... pad but yeah so that was essentially just a drum loop that you know I just loop a tiny bit of it and I'm playing it up in the on the keyboard and uh, messing with the filter um, yeah you can you can turn anything into anything else basically with granulator it's pretty amazing um, have I used portal before no I, I want to try portal portals like a um, another granular software thing um, yeah, somebody shouted out Dillinger. Dillinger is a god. That's true. That's very true. Love Dillinger. Um, when cutting the granulator sound, do I put an amp on the audio track? Uh, I would. I generally just like find the timbre that I like while I'm in this like channel, and then just record it and sort of commit to it. But sometimes I'll add like the amp later, or you know whatever. I'll like turn these off maybe and let's make this bigger. And that way I've got like a clean sort of pad. And then maybe add the amp later. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. It depends on like what approach I'm kind of going for. Like if I was doing an ambient kind of sound, I would keep things cleaner, longer, and uh, only add distortion when I knew I was really going to use it. Um, do I use span or do I rely on my ears for levels? I, re I rely on my ears for levels pretty much exclusively. Um, sometimes, you know, I have sort of like basic techniques like I just like to bounce things out look at the waveform and make sure the sub is coming up like a little bit below the kick and the snare and you know stuff like that another mixing trick I would do is like turn my headphones or the monitors all the way down and then turn them up to where I could just barely hear them and then mix in the uh, this works really well with hi-hats um, you put the hi-hats on like minus infinity you turn the volume way down, you play your loop, and then you turn up the hi-hats until you can hear them. Uh, and you can like hear them clearly, but they're not like more present than anything else. And then you turn everything back up. And usually that puts your hi-hats at a better level than they were before. Um, so that works really well for hats uh, and for um, any sort of high-end kind of thing. Um, yeah. Uh, Drum bus or saturator? Uh, I tend to go for saturator for drums. I also like, um, there's a saturator on here. I also like Saturn a lot. Um, and I also like uh, trash sometimes uh, for like a drum drum channel, uh, but I'll usually only use like the distortion part of trash. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? Do I turn? Do I do it this way and turn the tracks down to minus six dB before I send it to mastering? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I, I I'll just turn the master out down. Um, I'll just like put a utility on the master and just uh, you know put it on like minus six and just bounce it and make sure it's not peaking um, for like when I'm sending sending it to a mastering engineer. Um, and a lot of people like think that you have to do that the track has to be peaking at minus six. And that's like, that's an okay rule of thumb, but like really it doesn't need to be peaking any lower than like minus one. Because like, if you're, you know, 
if you're doing like stuff and if you're recording with with any kind of noise floor um you know turning everything down the mastering engineer is going to turn it back up and it's going to amplify the noise floor uh to some degree uh yeah, FleshNet. Okay, so FleshNet preview is going to be on my Instagram uh, real soon now, um, like tonight. So you guys can check it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sound toys. Sound toys are awesome. Um, love sound toys. So I'm using Decap. Uh, I was experimenting with a Decap on the master. Um, I use Echo Boy all the time. Filter Freak is really cool. Yeah, I love them. Um, Thoughts on clipping the main drums. Um, I tend to use like analog clip mode on Saturator. Um, there's a digital clipping plugin called K Clip that I used with Flume that he likes a lot, um, but it's not part of my like main workflow. Um, but yeah, uh, clipping can sound cool. It just like uh, depends on the track basically. But typically, if I'm gonna like uh, digitally clip something, I would like put an auto filter or like roll off the highs a little bit after the fact. Um, uh, do I throw a limiter on the master? And if so, uh, yeah, it, I, I'll, I'll throw a limiter on the master to like, uh, to work just to sort of catch a vibe. Um, like as you can see, we've got a limiter at plus six here, uh, just to work like on this right now. Um, how come I don't use a clean sub layer for my basses? I do, I do on a lot of tracks. Um, and I might, you know, actually do that. If I was to roll this track out, I might actually, you know, let's listen to this bass, so. What I would do is like auto filter and just listen to the bass. So I'm gonna put this on like 120. So I feel like there's enough sub information there and it's clean enough that putting a sign you know, <laughs> isn't necessarily going to change the t the uh, the vibe too much, but signs are cool because like you know a sign is, is clean and you know it's going to hit really hard on a big system. So yeah, it depends on this on the track. Like uh, shades, like third gate, there's like a sign on the on the bass um, because there just wasn't enough sub information in the original synth. Um, so if I was going to do a sign, I would I would switch that to a high pass and then like put a sign underneath it just with operator. Um, yeah. Analog sine wave for sub versus digital sub. I don't think it matters that much, especially when there's this much, like, uh, mid-range information. You're not going to be able to tell the difference between an analog sub and a digital sub. Um, you know, it's just sort of occupying that space. Uh, if you want it to sound more natural, I, I would basically, like, uh, here, let me just show you, like, operator, so, um, where's my operator? Don't want granulator. Mm. So, I would say, don't reset the phase, and that's, like, the main thing that's just going to sound, you know, a little bit more analog, is, like, not resetting the phase, and also turn this attack up so it's like you know five milliseconds so it's just a little bit more natural and then like put this on one voice not re-trigger uh, and it's just gonna like that way whenever you're playing the note it's just gonna pick up in the waveform like uh, I think like it's picking it's like opening up a gate on the waveform um, rather than restarting the waveform every time you play a new note uh, and, uh, yeah. Uh, will a sign sub over a bass cause phasing if you don't EQ out subs in your bass? Yeah, it will. That's why you got to high pass this. So, um, if I was like, here, let's, uh, solo both of these. Yeah, so if I if I hadn't uh, you know high pass that, then yeah, they would be clashing a little bit. Um, yes, Asin. Yeah, yo, what's up, UFO? Yeah, Asin is sick. Uh, trip to the moon. Yeah, classic. Um, 
how to get my name out. I've been making tracks for a really long time. I put my first EP out in like 2000 and, I don't know, nine, eight, something like that. Um, so, you know, I've been doing this shit for a really long time. Uh, do I use modular grid? Yeah, it's, uh, I think my username is just EEPROM on there, but it's, it's not up to date. Uh, four hero. Yeah. Four hero is the God for sure. Um, I love four hero, especially the like late nineties, early two thousands, like, um, sort of like liquidy, funky, but still like very organic and like hard for hero stuff. Um, any new deep sky objects? Yeah, we've got like a bunch of music that's sort of, uh, coming together into the next release. Um, so yeah, house music is definitely happening. Um, Andrew came and stayed with us for a little bit, so we got a bunch of work done. Um, tips for integrating Eurorack into the workflow. I like to spend, I like to separate my time between sound design and composition. So I'm not, I don't have any way of sending MIDI to the Eurorack and uh, I mean, I could if I wanted to, but it's not set up that way. It's just set up so that I sequence everything on the Eurorack and I sample it into Ableton. And then I, um, I uh, pick out the moments that I like, and that might be the seed of a new track. Um, can you see the rack? Um, yeah, hang on a sec. Let me just uh, let me go camera only here. Oh, camera's not working, but let me try and like float you guys over to the to the modular as much as I can. It's over there. <laughs> Sorry, you can't see it up close. I'll do. I've done a like modular stream where I put the camera on the modular, but that's the modular over there. It's a uh, big old big old dormant synthesizer right now, but. Yeah, when I uh, when I feel uninspired with in the box stuff, I will just jump on the modular, and it's just such a completely different workflow that it really brings back the inspiration and makes me want to like make uh, make music again. Um, yeah, what sequencers do I have on the rack? I use the um, Stilson Hammer. Uh, what else? The, um, that's kind of, I mean, uh, I use the DFAM, which has a built-in sequencer. Um, and then that's it as far as traditional sequencers. Uh, the Stilson Hammer is pretty much as good as I need for anything. And then if I want to do like a MIDI sequence, I can use the Electron Octatrack and like a MIDI interface. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah. That's it for sequencers. Yeah, getting lost in the wires. That's, that's accurate. Lost in the in the voltage. Um, do I use VCV rack? I do. I, I've been messing around with it a little bit. Uh, I, you know, it's pretty awesome. It's it's cool to be able to just drop in like an infinite number of modules, um, but also it can get kind of confusing really fast, and uh, you can you can definitely get lost in it. Um, uh, do I still watch tutorials? Yeah, I, I do watch tutorials. Um, you know, uh, sometimes I watch like, I watch a lot of tutorials about graphics cause I do a lot of graphics work. Um, uh, I don't watch too many like, um, audio tutorials. Sometimes I do. If I have a specific question about some plugin or whatever, I'll, I'll use the tutorials. Um, but YouTube is such an indispensable, amazing resource. Um, what did Greg and I use for the visuals in the AV set? So Greg created a bunch of visuals and he, you know, sort of uh, curated a bunch of visuals also. I've created a bunch of my own and we loaded everything into, um, into Resolume, uh, triggered it via MIDI and uh from ableton and then uh captured it with obs and then 
uh, the um, connect, we use the connect to make the point cloud um, with uh, a processing sketch that I like found online and modified. Um, and then like piped that into Resolume using Siphon, right? Uh, what, what program do I use for graphics? I use Cinema 4D, I use Octane Render, uh, I use, um, you know, Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects. Um, so usually like every graphics clip will, I'll touch like at least three or four of those programs. Um, yeah. Uh, what audio interface do I use? I use the uh, Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40, and then I use the Focusrite Claret Octopre for an expander. Um, is it hard to get into graphics? It's easier now than it ever has been because the programs are so good. You've got Blender is free. Cinema 4D is not free, but it's amazing. Uh, and it's just like easier. There, YouTube is incredible. Like there's so much knowledge out there on YouTube. There's so many free assets that you can use um, and free textures and free tutorials. And it's like the best time it's ever been to get into working with graphics. And there's tons of cool stuff you can do even just with Blender. Um, operator or Wavetable? I don't know if I've like ever used Wavetable on a track. I use, um, I use like some Wavetable, um, like the Shapeshifter on the Eurorack, but I don't really use the Wavetable thing on Ableton. I also don't really use Serum that much. I, that whole like Wavetable-y sound is very like I don't know, it reminds me of like Massive when like Massive came out and everyone was doing modern talking waveform. It was just like, you just know immediately like what it is. And I, I like things to sound like, you know, it's just like, I, I, I like to use just like a basic waveform, but like the timbre of the filter and the distortion and the reverb and all the processing is like more what I'm about. So I'll just use like a sine wave and a sawtooth wave and everything that happens after it is what gives it like a lot of character you know um so yeah you know it's like i like those wavetable sounds sometimes but like sometimes they sound too wavetable for me um have i heard of zbrush oh have, has seto heard of zbrush yeah zbrush is sick i've, I've been messing around with zbrush a little bit um yeah uh, yeah, granulator is a move, def definitely. Um, cool. It's been about two hours, so I'm going to wrap it up, guys. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, diving into the sample pack, and um, yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, yeah, um, stay tuned for uh what's coming up so my new single um flesh net is coming out on friday um there's going to be an audio preview on instagram in very soon probably like five minutes and uh there's going to be a shade smirch drop including some much requested uh previously released merch items that we did like 50 of like the night the dreadless angel hoodie um we're going to re-release on a pre-order so everyone will be able to get it um so uh yeah we're going to be announcing that this week um yeah so new shades merch drop uh new eprom single yeah it's been real guys i appreciate you guys so much um see you next time peace out <laughs>